Subcommittee for the DHSS Reorganization Committee. Um, I'm joined by my co-chair, Representative Krista Griffith. It is 11.03 a.m. and we will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It has been way too long since I've seen most of your faces. Um, it also feels like yesterday because I don't necessarily remember the last 11 months in, in totality. Um, but I am eager to get back to work. Um, I am eager to pick up where we left off, uh, but let's focus today on getting back on track, remembering where we left off, reviewing the minutes, and then discussing our path forward uh, for the remainder timeline of the full reorganization committee. Um, I don't know if we want to go around and just say a quick introduction, um, since it's been a while. I know we have a couple new faces, uh, so it's probably a good idea. Good morning. I'm Krista Griffith, I'm state representative for the 12th district, which includes neighborhoods in the um, North Wilmington, Greenville, and Hocassin area. Um, before I, um, I'll, I'll um, we can do the popcorn game as they call it and call out individuals to introduce. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to turn to Taylor Hawk, if I could. Just Taylor, if you could please, um, because there was some seemed to be some questions about the posting of this meeting, if you could please, um, for the record, indicate. Um, how the meeting was posted and shared with the public. Thank you, Taylor. Yes, so the meeting was posted on the legislative website, Legis, within the required time frame. Um, typically, it is posted to both Legis and the public meeting calendar, has been for previous meetings, and that will be the practice moving forward to have it posted in both places. But it was publicly posted within the required time frame. Thank you so much, Taylor. And I'm going to um, turn it over to Pam Ruther. Pam, um, could you introduce yourself? And then when you're finished introducing yourself, if you could call on someone else to introduce also. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Pam Ruther. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Easter Seals. We serve uh, children and adults with disabilities, physical and intellectual disabilities. Good to see you all. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Sheila Bravo. Good morning, I'm Sheila Bravo, a CEO of DANA, the Delaware Alliance for Nonprofit Advancement. And our mission is to help advance uh, nonprofits in the state of Delaware, providing uh, training and uh, advocacy and um, consulting support. So glad to be here. And I will introduce um, Michelle. Good morning. Um, I'm Michelle Stant. I am um, the Deputy Director for the Division of Management Services within the Department of Health and Social Services. Um, so DMS is our central administrative agency, which oversees, I think, a lot of the issues that this committee um, is discussing. Um, and I do have a colleague of mine, David Newnham, is one of the attendees, and she is the director for our Division of Services for Aging and Adults with Physical Disabilities and also has a breadth of knowledge in this area. Muted. Um, would Lynn be able to introduce herself next? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Lynn Morrison, CEO of Brandywine Counseling and Community Services. Um, Brandywine provides behavioral health services across the state of Delaware. We specialize um, in co-occurring and substance use disorder, medically assisted treatment, but we also do prevention, early intervention, and some criminal justice programs. Uh, I will kick it to Kristen. Hi, this is Kirsten Olson. I'm the Kirsten. CEO. Sorry. That's okay, Lynn. It's happened before. Uh, the CEO at Children and Families First, and our mission is to help children facing adversity on their journey to adulthood, and we provide a whole continuum of services to kids and families across the state, and I will call on Susanna. Hi, I'm Susanna Eaton-Ryan. I'm the Director of Employment and Outreach at the Arc of Delaware. Our mission is to promote and protect the human rights of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families um, through advocacy and programs. 
Oh, I have to call on someone. Um, Jeannie. Thanks, Susanna. Um, I'm the president of Quality Management Associates Delaware. We provide residential services up and down the state uh, for people with IDD and severe behavior problems. And I'm gonna call on Elizabeth. Thank you all. Or perhaps I can't call on Elizabeth <laughs> because she's on her phone. So who do we have left? No, nope, Jeannie, I was able. Oh. Jeannie, I was able to unmute okay. myself. Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, I'm Elizabeth. Thank you so much for your patience with me using the phone. Um, Elizabeth Drebel Blair, CEO of Quality Management Associates Delaware, or QMA. As Jeannie said, we are a residential and behavioral services provider, serving uh, individuals, adults with disabilities. Uh, all over the state of Delaware. Good morning. Jeannie, if you wouldn't mind picking someone else though, I would appreciate it. Of course, I'm looking up and down the aisle here to see who hasn't been called on yet. Sarah? Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Sarah Stroh. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Westside Family Healthcare. Um, we have locations in Newcastle and Kent counties, and we serve, um, we specialize in underinsured and uninsured individuals. Um, we have about 30,000 patients throughout the state. And I think we have, Alexa, have you gone? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Senator Poor's new legislative assistant, and I will be, um, I'm still in transition, but it's very nice to meet everybody. Hi. Uh, I think the only person left is Ariana, and she's going to be doing um, the captioning for us uh, for this meeting today. So thank you, Ariana, for your help uh, this morning. Um, the I think the only people we're missing as far as committee members are Karen Fitzhugh um, and Andrew Henderson from Horizon House. Um, otherwise, we are um, a full house here today, so I thank you for joining us. I know nobody's time is um, readily available, so your time and commitment to this work is so very much appreciated. Um, before we go through and start reviewing the minutes, I just really want to say thank you to those of you who are either on as panelists or listening in from DHSS for all the work that you've done for the last 11 months. Um, addressing this absolute chaos and um, that we are in. I'm not going to use any of the words that everybody said because they, they just can't hear them anymore. Um, but I want to thank you for um, your commitment um, to, you know, jumping into a fire that nobody really knew their way out of. So thank you for your work. Um, and thank you again, panel, uh, committee members, for your commitment to this work. So that said, we probably need a little bit of a refresher where we were. Uh, hopefully you've all had the opportunity to review the minutes from the March meeting, which was probably just about the last thing we all did before we went inside our houses and never came out. Um, if you all would like to take a minute to review those minutes real quick, um, and then we'll go ahead and I'll ask for a motion to approve. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes or any corrections? I'll make a motion. This is Sheila Bravo. Nice second. This is Jeannie Drobit. Um, any objections? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you. Okay, so the next thing is I wanted to review the timeline that the full reorganization committee is on. As of now, we met uh, back in December uh, briefly to, again, just like we're doing today, get back on track, um, discuss where we need to go from here and where we left off. So if you're, if you're able to look at your timeline um, that was that uh, Taylor um, was gracious enough to send out. Right now we are in our, the January timeline, we're regrouping, we're meeting um, and going over what we had um, accomplished uh, in the months before uh, everything sort of was put on hold. Um, I think that basically we will continue to meet um, on a regular basis uh, through March as needed. Um, I'd like, this was the day, this is around the time and day we did it on Fridays, either usually in the morning or very first thing in the afternoon. Um, it seemed to work for most people by and large. I would like to stick with that. I know it works for myself. I know it works for Representative Griffith. Um, so unless there's any major issue with that, I think we'll go ahead and stick with that. I also think that recognizing everybody's time and certainly we will not eat when we don't need to, but if we can start on a three week time frame, just to get back on track that way, if we're done sooner, we're done sooner. Um, I'm certainly not gonna continue meeting, but I'd rather be slightly more aggressive than once a month in the, in the front end. Um, and finish early, then then run out of time. And given how complex the information is, we are going over. Um, so, if everybody, does anybody have any issues with that? Uh, any thoughts? Discussion? Sounds like a good plan to me, Carolyn. Thank you. Okay. Good. That's another thing. Check. Uh, okay, so actually I skipped and I apologize for that. Sorry. So the, what we're charged with doing after we are finished addressing any outstanding problems, any um, issues that have risen to the top, things that we've already discussed or things that we will will uncover or or discuss going forward, um, they the just wanted to remind everyone that our goal is to set forth recommendations to the full uh, the full committee to to vote on. I know one of the things that had already presented itself as low hanging fruit was uh, the technology and the software to get procurement and the contracts for the department the entire department up online. I know it was something that Wendy Jones, who was our um, assigned DHSS staffer, was very passionate about, and I believe, and this is where I'm gonna ask Michelle to jump in, I believe that is either underway or it is, is been done. I don't know to the extent that every division is all online in that capacity, but I'm gonna turn this over to Michelle and ask that she give us an update on that. And then any other updates um, from the department's perspective that has changed or improved or any policy uh, differences since March or since the new secretary has um, come into leadership. Hi, I do believe the two biggest things really are the technology. Um, one which was implemented during um, while this committee was meeting was the use of DocuSign for electronic signatures. So that has really been incorporated into at this point all parts of our business that electronic signatures can be used. Um, and then the other one is Bonfire, which is an online procurement software. We are definitely using it primarily uh, for RFP management, um, which is reducing the uh, need for hard copies. And that went live in May 2020. And then um, also as, as contracts are, um, as if there's agreements signed upon, those are uploaded into Bonfire as well. So we have those. Um, <laughs> That really is probably the two biggest things that have changed in the procurement 
piece that were discussed by this committee previously. Um, so I think that that's really what, what I have for you right now. Does anybody have any questions for Michelle in regards to that, those two points? I'd, I'd ask me, go ahead. All right, go ahead. So oh, I was just gonna ask, um, uh, <clears throat> I've definitely had the DocuSign experience, which is great and ma makes things much easier. Just wonder what the bonfire looks like kind of outward facing to contractors. I haven't seen it. Um, I could get the link for it and, and uh, share that with the committee as a follow up. Has anybody, has any of the, any of my, any of the providers uh, that are on the committee, has anybody interfaced with Bonfire yet since it's been implemented from a user perspective? I have not. Yeah. Okay. So no. I know we have one pending at Easter Seals, but I don't know that it's been, we've completed the process. Uh, and I haven't been involved in it, but I can find out how it's going. Okay. Well, as I would say, I guess, as you, you know, as we move forward with the work of the committee, if you are, you know, how uh, on the user end, how it's working, I think this would be a great opportunity for them to hear from their perspective, how it's being implemented or any user uh, concerns you might have, or if it's wonderful and great, they should probably also hear that too. That's what I was, I wanted to piggyback on what Kirsten said, the, the DocuSign has been a, a great asset um, and definitely simplified and made things easier for the provider. So I, I can concur with that. Yeah. Great. All right. We're forging ahead. Um, is there, before we go into the next thing is uh, on the agenda, uh, the one of the last things we had done before um, we our work was put on hold was put in a very large data request to the department um, and understandably they did what they could to get back to us before the world shut down. Um, I wanted, you know, I, I certainly needed a refresher. Um, I wanted to have all of you review that too, not just the answers, which we can continue to review, but not have to necessarily get through everything right now. Um, but make sure that, you know, anything, certainly anything that's outstanding, do we, do we still need it? Um, certainly there's been plenty going on in the world of health to potentially uh, warrant additional information um, or again, deep, like, render anything that we had asked for either obsolete or unnecessary or deprioritized. So if you all have had an opportunity to look at that and then the response we got from the department, if there's any questions um, right now, I'd like to open the discussion. For that. We're all so quiet. Um, I, I guess I'll start. Um, the first question was around the um, rate methodology study, and I believe that there was a initial presentation of of the rate methodology. But is there also a second one that's being conducted as well? So the first recommendation out of that rate methodology study was to create what is essentially a roadmap of what the cadence, timing, information needed, resources needed from both the department and the provider network, what that would look like to really come up with a quote unquote roadmap to um, map out what rate updates and changes and methodologies. Like there's a lot of wording around this topic. Um, so we did engage the um, same vendor, which is Burns and Associate, it's a division of HMA. Um, and they are working with us to finalize what that roadmap will look like. And we are aiming for, um, we actually have an epilogue that has, we have to have um, information available for review by February 1st. And we are on time to meet that deadline. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot. Um, I know that a rate study um, is, underway right now in under DMMA for 
substance use disorder services uh, that was you know, sort of already underway before the rate methodology study gets part of a larger federal grant. Um, and I've spoken with DMA and met with DMA about that rate study. It, it, it doesn't include mental health services. Um, so it's not all inclusive of that, of that division, division of mental health and uh, substance abuse, no, substance use and mental health, sorry. Um, and so that is still, um, a concern I know amongst the providers um, of those sort of community mental health services separate from SUG services. Uh, but that is underway. I believe the providers have the survey now. I don't know if that's, Lynn, is that come due? That's correct. It uh, They gave us an extension, thank goodness. I think it was due December 31st originally and they extended it to like the 13th or somewhere somewhere okay. next week, yeah. Oh, that's to know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, their their timeline has to do more with the with the grant. I think they were hoping for six to nine months. Um, again, that is a and and that, and this goes along with the whole rate methodology study. As, as you remember, it's a rate methodology study. It wasn't a rate study. Um, it was a it was a look at how all the different rates for services under DHSS were being conducted and um, which seemed you know, well-crafted and, and, and it analyzed how those, those rates are determined um, and whether an actual rate study for those particular, for each individual particular service was necessary. And I think the general consensus was that yes, <laughs> rate studies are necessary. Um, and on a regular basis. So we'll wait, we'll wait the, the next step for the Burns and Associates work. Um, and then of course the work that DMMA is doing under that, under that federal grant right now. Um, thank you for, for bringing that up, Sheila. Is there any other questions on, on that? It is, a, it is a big chunk of the work you guys are doing in that, in the department right now. And I know it's extremely important to everybody, at least on this committee. Um, does anybody else have any questions? It's, it's not it's not a cut and dry topic, so I, I know there, there are nuances. Um, Michelle, do you know if they have to, if it goes to the JFC next? Um, the epilogue actually prescribes the review. I believe it actually is for review and comment to both the JFC and for public. So, um, you know, we'll be sharing that as we get the timing sorted out. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that's really helpful. Okay, anything else amongst you all that, um, as it pertains to procurement or contracts, whether it's something we left off at that was in the questions, uh, in the data request, um, or has come up um, in the interim, in the, in the interim of um, the and slides. Um, I have a question, Carolyn. Uh, I see with some of the questions, we're still awaiting a response from the divisions. I assume that we're gonna be getting responses or with everything happening, I'm, I'm just questioning if we're gonna get the responses and um, at, at which time. Do you think that's going to happen? Well, that that's what I wanted to discuss. I wanted to make sure that anything that we we, we will put forward um, the remaining outstanding questions that we still want answers to, and then any new questions that um, we might have. I'm I'm sure in the last eleven months there has been no shortage of contracts. Right. <laughs> produced um, in the department. Um, and I know you all are still hard at work providing services and I'm sure to some extent um, in very new and uh, unchartered, there's the word, <laughs> ways. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure that if when um, uh, Representative Griffith and I do reach out to the department with additional requests or follow up with the with the outstanding pieces of information we were looking for. We were all inclusive 
of anything new that um, might come up. It's been a year since Wendy presented us with all that information that we had requested in that first mm -hmm. meeting. Um, we had had that very robust list of contracts that uh, she was able to give us in a, you know, the it's not the actual contracts, it's a, it's an Excel spreadsheet, but that was very helpful and, and we mm -hmm. were able to um, go through that pretty, pretty specifically. So given that it's been a year, I don't know how you all feel about um, requesting an additional report uh, on contracts sent, uh, that the department has engaged in in the last year, not necessarily to pick through each and every one. Uh, the concerns we had were the sheer volume of contracts, uh, how they are being managed, and then how we can, how we can, in your roles as on the other side of the of the contracting relationship with DHSS recommendations on how they how they can improve the contracting prop uh, contracting volume and any problems or, or bottlenecks that that come from just that incredible volume of, of contracts that go in and out of DHSS. So I don't know how you all feel about making that request. Um, I don't necessarily think that Wendy's work that first time around was very, very extensive. I don't necessarily think we need everything redone, but it's been almost a year. So uh, I don't know if you all think that's worth it. I think um, to piggyback on that question, I think one of the things that came out of Wendy's presentation as well as the information that Sheila gathered that we presented toward the end of last year, I don't remember when, sorry, <laughs> it gets a little muddled, but the idea that there's so much variability within divisions about how the process is handled, as well as some of the expectations of, you know, is overhead allowable? Is it not? Is it, you know, what are the, the contract parameters? We came up with some really, I thought some really good information about some ways to improve consistency. Um, and so as we're talking about reports, you know, it, it is also looking at, is there a way to streamline or unify the process so that um, one department, the, 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 the umbrella department has a single point of processing those RFPs. Yes, I agree. Very good point. And, and it might be worth finding that document again, Sheila. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I can reset it out. Um, I think that just to piggyback on what Pam said is, some of the questions that we were asking were really to better understand why, what, what was the degree of variability and then why, why that variability was taking place so that we could, before we brought forward recommendations, we understood a little bit more about, about you know, the why and, and, the, and the degree. So I, I, would, I think that would still be helpful to understand so that we, when we make the recommendations, we're we're, we're informed as, you know, there may be some very good reasons why, and we certainly wouldn't want to un, unintentionally have a, a, a negative impact. And I think, oh, sorry. And I think if we just get the questions answered that we originally asked, we may be able, to, not to give anyone any more work during a pandemic, we may be able to get the, the uh, an, um, a perception of what happens if we just have those questions answered. Uh, because I think to overwhelm people with more questions, unless, you know, all of you disagree, may be too much, but just to answer what we asked, I think would be very helpful. Okay. Absolutely. No, I, I do not want to be intrusive on their time. I, I, we speak to an <laughs> enough of our partners in DHSS to know that just like you all in service provision, they have their hands full. So I'm not looking to add anything more. That's why I want to make sure that the ones that are still there and outstanding, we still need those answers um, as well. I just, you know, given we're all in human services and health, you know, public health response, <laughs> something new might have 
trickled to the top during a public health emergency. Um, and, and, you know, I know our, you know, my personal experience and perspective from the divisions we deal with, I know what those contractual issues or, or problems are. That's, you know, the, having um, representation from, from Kirsten and Sarah that, you know, I don't necessarily deal, you know, we don't necessarily deal with public health on a regular basis or, or even to SAFID um, to the extent of, of DDDS and DSAM. So, so, you know, making sure that we know if this is department-wide issues or just division by division. And I know the department is working really hard to get all the divisions into one very well-oiled machine. So I, I want to recognize that that we have had several discussions with the secretary and her leadership team and the work we're doing to sort of get that train on the track and, and running as, um, as one uh, unit. Um, so they're, they're well on their way. I, I just wanna make sure that we're doing everything we can to um, help them identify and, and make recommendations that are helpful to them as a department and to the service recipients. So the um, bonfire um, program is is that that's being used across all of the departments? It's uh, as far as I know, just DHSS uses it, but I can see if there's other state agencies. So the divisions within DHSS should be using this. Yes. Is there um, reports that we can get easily from that that might give us some? like maybe a summary of the number of contracts or the titles of contracts or, you know, something that's not labor intensive for folks, but would still give an idea. I would have to check to see what are the easily and readily available reports. I do know um, we've had 49 RFP RFIs go through since it went live in May. So like that is an easily accessible data point, but I'm not sure what the others are. I'll have to check with our contracts team. Okay. Because, I mean, that's exciting to have that. I, I guess I'm curious to also to see what kind of data and information you'll be able to get out of that as far as m monitoring, I don't know, efficiency or eff efficiency in particular, I think. Um, there's a lot of short-term contracts going on right now, and it creates a lot of work uh, every time you have to renew a con. I'm, I'm on everybody's side, right? Yeah. So, um yeah, I'm a little curious about to see what's been happening since in the last couple of, well, since last year to see what's happening there. I think that's a really good point because it could be that, if I recall, you know, the, the technology was one of the things that was hopeful that it would actually help to alleviate some of the, the challenges. So it, it might be good in a future meeting to, to have a, a quick overview and what what were the solutions that the technology is bringing forward that may, may address some of the things that we were identifying as challenges? As I review the questions over again, um, it's interesting to me what has not been answered. And, and, I, and I'm wondering if the questions that have not been answered are points that everyone is working on. So perhaps that's why we don't have the answers to some of these things yet. It was Jeannie, the, a lot of the answers that were outstanding. I mean, we, I will in full disclosure say that they probably had, I again, have to reach to the back of my brain for 11 months ago, but um, Representative Griffith, would you say it was like a week or so, a week and a half, probably from when we put in the, request to when we shut down it was i mean our last meeting was what march 6th and all of this yeah was happening. Jeannie, would you can you give us um can you just just for example sake to bring us back to um sort of where we are now do you just have an example or two of some of those unanswered issues just so i could try to um and I, and i think that would help with michelle too i know there's probably a lot of them but just if we could sort of figure out um maybe what what are the most integral ones um that, that we need answer do, do you, and, and again, I sure. have to put you on the spot. No, but no, it, that's it, fine. That, but that, if you that's have, fine. What, which ones would you suggest, you know, that are really, um, that we really need to prioritize and get to? And I think that Michelle, would that be helpful to you um, to see, 
you know, what, what it is that um, in terms of priorities uh, will help you in your department. Yeah, yeah. And I think that just I'm trying to, to remember some of the conversations I had with Wendy back in March when these came through. And I think that these came through, we were able to send back what we can and then March right. happened. And right. so this is kind of a point in time piece of where we were mid March, 2020. And I will leave that there. Yeah, so, um, and yeah. like, I apologize because I'm like, where, you know, it's, I'm lost. So help us, help us come back, Jeannie. <laughs> help us. And, and then Absolutely. we can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, the first question is, um, what is the approach contract managers use to negotiate overhead rates? when there are agencies getting less than 10% indirect costs when the policies tend to 15%. That's a very big question to people that provide services. That's a very important point, particularly uh, in IDD because, and I'm sure in, D, in, in mental health too, we don't pay our staff a lot of salary. So that that overhead is, is very important to us. Uh, then, then the um, next one is what circumstances would cause the divisions to delay payment be, be beyond the provider not submitting the invoice. And I know in mental health, this has been a real crisis issue for people. People have not been getting paid. Um, question number five, how many contracts does DHSS currently have that utilizes external consultants who provide training to either DHS staff or contract require training to service providers? Again, you're looking at a duplication there. And if, you know, if we're looking for efficiencies, that would be a very good place to start. Then please provide a five-year look back by, by fiscal year on total DHSS spending on all consultant contracts by division. Again, that's going to look at um, efficiencies. And then uh, provide a five-year look back by fiscal year detailing the number of distinct direct service providers that are providing services throughout DHS by division. And from what I see, I mean, we've gotten comprehensive answers to everything else except for those questions. And I stand corrected if I'm wrong, but I think those are the outstanding ones. You, you know, you're you're right, and I and I know that those required more coordination with the other divisions. Mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. And then again, you know, the world stopped. So mm -hmm. sure, so I think that the ones that we did get thorough answers to, or the ones that we did get answers to, were the ones that they were able to put together in that week's time, and then knowing that there was additional work that needed to be, do to, to be done to um, provide a thorough answer. So that's a really good summary. I know- um, Real quick, Carolyn. Yeah. Um, thanks, Katie. The other, so, so okay, so qu answer those questions. So, so for, our, for next steps, we need those questions answered or at least a response from the department in terms of, you know, if, if, if they can work on one, you know, get, you know, to, to get, to get prog progressing, to get some of these answers between now and our next gathering. Um, are there, because of the pandemic, are there any issues relative to our work um, that have arisen that have given rise to some questions that you all have? Like what, so yes, we have this outstanding information that we need, um, you know, as of March of 2020, but has there been any new issues that have um, given us uh, as a group here some uh, questions that we need answered uh, in terms of uh, contracts and the work that our committee is doing? I know um, that I, I know there are, have been, I've heard from, I've heard of at least three contracts three longstanding contracts, either for individual programs or entire providers that, well, programs that were not re renewed by their respective divisions that had been services and had been a provider of those services and held that contract for some time. Um, so I guess one thing I would, would wanna know is, you know, is that 
resulting in any sort of significant decrease in services? Is that an elimination of that service or program line? Um, are they going in a different, with a different provider of those same services? Um, so, so I, you know, I, I know of at least a couple, so I, I don't necessarily just want to ask about one or two. I, I don't know if that's the request and, and maybe this is for all of you. The request is if, if there's a significant decrease in services or I don't even know necessarily what the right way to ask that question, but it, but hearing from several providers of longstanding, you know, holding longstanding contracts, I, I just want to make sure that we're not facing people that are losing services right now um, in the middle of this. I, and I know there are, um, you know, we've had one residential provider decide that they could not afford to provide services, uh, SUD residential services in the state anymore. And that's resulted in about 45 beds um, for residential SUD services no longer in the state. So I obviously from our, my professional perspective have issues with that, but I want to make sure that the services in other divisions that people are still receiving services by and large. And if, and if those services no longer exist, what's the, what's the shift or what is the, um, the goal? That makes sense to everybody. Michelle, do you need um, for, just for clarity's sake, do you need us to resend the questions that we need answers to um, along with, um, you know, a form of Carolyn's question um, that, that she just asked and any, and we can give an opportunity to committee members after this meeting, maybe say within a week, we will get you what our, qu our questions are. And then if you could respond to us to let us know when we can expect responses, understanding, yes. that, understanding <laughs> that all five may not be able to be answered in three weeks, but at least if we can get rolling on answers to a couple of the questions in the next meeting that we have, then we can start to dissect that information and see um, if we have any positions or questions about it. Is that uh, reasonable to you? Yes, if, if you could please resend that. And I apologize, my internet just cut out for the last half of what you asked. But if you could just please send them and, and then um, I'll work with the teams here and get, you know, responses to um, what, in, in a, you know, and what, and identify what we can realistically do given where the teams are today. We'll, um, we'll put together a, a new sort of condensed refresher list of the, outstanding things that Jeannie just brought up and then anything new that ha comes out of this this um, this discussion today. And, and, and Representative Griffith absolutely at least speaks for me within, you know, obviously with the work that you're all doing, we're not asking for it tomorrow. Is there anything else? Um, either on the list, the information request that we, the older one, um, anything new, especially for those of you that are working in, uh, you know, in public health, divisions of public health, um, or other parts of the community, as pertains to that. No? Good? Okay. Uh, Carolyn, I'm, I, kind of related to the question that you asked about uh, longstanding contracts that um, are not being renewed. I think it comes back to something that we um, identified in our um, little studies around communication. So um, in that investigation around whether or not there's a decrease in service levels, it would also, I think, be helpful to understand um, what how the communication um, flowed back to the service providers so that they understood the why behind the loss of the contract. And, um, and, and I just think that's, you know, I think that's something that we continue to hear is the, the variability around communication processes. So this might be a way to kind of just see what, um, how that communication flow worked to help the providers know um, what, what, 
what the reasons were. Very good point. Thank you, Shaw. And I also did hear that as well. Okay. Representative Griff, do you have anything? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you, Carolyn. You're doing a great job. <laughs> I've been really quiet because you, you, you got it all under control and I'm so thankful for you because again, I am um, just, uh, you know, I'm learning so much from the, from this group and from our provider representatives and members here. And um, I just want to be helpful. And I, I appreciate your um, dedication and leadership on this. Uh, or as my son says, I'm just being a bossy pants. Um, Go Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you for that representative. I'm, I'm glad I'm being efficient. Uh, that's really all I want to do is be efficient and helpful. Um, there is, you know, there is a, a lot of progress we've made and there is a lot of good we can do with this, the work of this committee. And, and you know, personally, I, I, I've seen some improvements with a lot of the issues that when we all started our work, um, we identified and, and given the circumstances, improvements are to be commended because under extremes like this, you know, it's just one thing, at least speaking for myself, keeping your head above water. And as I said to somebody yesterday, you just got to get through the next day. That's the only thing we have to do. Um, so, so I, I, I think that is a really positive, um, uh, really positive thing to focus on is that there in these times there, there are steps moving forward and, and the work that we do, I, I want to be as helpful as possible. Um, so that people are ultimately served and, and providers are around to keep serving them um, because they're the experts. Okay, uh, where are we on the agenda? Then the subgroup progress, I think that was other subgroups. I don't know that I have a ton of information on the other subgroups, Taylor. Do you? <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. No, nope, no worries. I can just say that I think the other subgroups are similar to the full or committee um, reassessing what information was gathered prior to the pause of the committee's work. And I think these first meetings all kind of look pretty similar with what, what data was collected. What do we still need to request of the department? And so not super specific, but I hope that gives some context of progress. That's fine. I just didn't want to skip over item number three because I honestly couldn't remember if I had something to say about that. Um, okay. Does anybody else um, have anything else that they want to either sit on or think on between now and the next meeting? Um, or um, anything else that they feel is worth um, addressing today. Um, after today, we'll put together that new, that refresher cleaned up list um, for the department. Um, and then the new things that uh, we discussed today. Uh, that will be my work homework to do. Certainly, if you have thoughts, any of you have thoughts after we um, finish up here today, feel free to email me separately. We, you know, we don't we can certainly um, bring those things up for for discussion in our next meeting, but we can we can add that in um, we can add that in later if we if we need to. If you're think of something while you're walking your dogs or brushing your teeth, which is generally when I have all my good thoughts. Anybody else? I just, that sounds like a really good path forward. And I am thankful that we all got back together and could reorient our brains around this work. So this was a helpful meeting today. And I am glad, yes. It, as, as much as I um, was eager to get, to get back to work on this, I also had a, it's a really big effort to get back to where my brain was on March the 6th. 
which I don't know if that was even in this lifetime. I don't remember. No. Okay. All right. Well, I think that we all get a gold star for being this efficient because it is 1152 and never has a meeting that I've been a part of. Ended that early, and I want to give you guys back time on your Fridays. I, I know I at least have a 12-year-old in virtual school that now gets his lunch made by his mother and not in my grave that he almost burns the house down. Okay, anything else? Next date, Carolyn. The next meeting week? I yeah. think if we're going for three weeks, one, two, three, it would be the 29th. I am free after 12. After 12? One o'clock? That, that works. Awesome. One o'clock. I'm writing that down. 1 p.m. on January 29th. Same time, same place, unfortunately. Although I wish I could see you all in person. Okay. All right. Good work. And, Thanks, and, everybody. And I can definitely this say good, good work, ladies. I need a motion to adjourn, though. Oh, Carolyn, actually, before we go, if I oh, can open comment. it up. For, yeah. Forgot about that. Sorry. So for the attendees that have joined, if you could utilize the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to provide public comment, I'll give you an opportunity to do so. Okay, so we have Deva Noonan. I'm going to press allow to talk. Deva, if you could just say your first and last name before providing comments. Thanks, Taylor. Deva Noonan. I wanted to take a moment to thank the committee. Um, I've been attending as a member of the public um, in my role as director of the Division of Services for Aging and Adults with Physical Disabilities. Um, and I wanted to, since the press release is out there in the ether somewhere and probably on its way to all of you, I wanted to take a moment to let you know that I've accepted the appointment of Director of Management Services here at DHSS. So along with the wonderful work of Deputy Director um, Michelle Stan, I look forward to helping you guys work through this process um, and making these improvements to the contract process at DHSS. And I wanted to take just a moment to thank you for all the work that you've done so far. Thank you and congratulations, Deva. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Deva, the press release went out at 11.10 while we were meeting. So yes, congratulations. <laughs> Perfect. Breaking news right here, folks. Well, thank you. And, and again, congratulations, Deva. I, Really, our, our work here is we're, only thing we're hoping is to help improve what you do. Um, and to the extent that we are helpful, um, you have our commitment to just that. Um, so congratulations, congratulations to Michelle. Um, and uh, we will keep moving this bus forward. Um, any other public comment? I do not see any hands. I'll give it one more moment. No, I think that's it. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn 34 minutes early? So move. I'll second it, Pam. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody objecting to starting your Friday earlier? Oh, wait, we can leave work? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, uh, I wish. <laughs> sure, I said that. Your boss isn't on the <laughs> on listening in. And Thank now that we Thank have a you, journey. everybody. Pace. Have a wonderful weekend. Get some rest. Bye. Thank you. Bye, all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.